Hello everybody and welcome to the Overwatch League. My name is Brandon Hook. I'm trying to raise a family of crows in my hair and I'm joined by Joshua Wilkinson <laughs> who is trying to look a bit like an egg. So there we are. We're bringing you the action here on this fine Saturday. Almost forgot what day it was. Uh, for, of course, the first match which is going to be the Vancouver Titans versus the Los Angeles Gladiators. And it is a little bit difficult to tell what day it is because we started the Overwatch League this week on a Friday because it's the beginning of True, the Countdown actually. Cup qualifiers. Yep. So we're getting things started out, we're shaking stuff up a bit, but it's the same solid tournament format that has delivered just amazing results throughout the last two months. Yes, and as you can see from the rewards here, this is what the teams are playing for this time. Same kind of reward structure. In fact, I believe the exact same uh, reward structure as the Summer Showdown that was just played, where you know the top three teams get a couple of wins on record. Uh, but of course, that prize money doesn't hurt whatsoever as well. Um, and it, it's it's everything to play for. Of course, slight differences in terms of prize pool between the APAC region and the NA region. But at the end of the day, this is the end goal for every single team right now currently playing in the Overwatch League, or at least the short term goal the end goal probably going to be the grand finals but yes, uh, but in terms of the short term definitely makes it nice and easy to, to have something to play for yeah, and both of these teams are focused on the short term right now, I dare say, because the Vancouver Titans, this brand new team coming into the league, are starting to just make slow approaches higher and higher, and the Gladiators have a lot to fix as well. So this should actually be a very close match coming up, in my opinion. The Vancouver Titans are just yeah. coming off a loss to the Paris Eternal, and okay, they lost to them 3-0 yesterday and 3-1 in the Summer Showdown, but actually Paris is arguably the best team in North America right now. You can make some arguments about the Shock and, and the Philadelphia Fusion, but Paris are definitely up there and so for Vancouver to be playing them in any way close which some of the maps were is actually a pretty decent look for the Titans and I want to really just try and I guess put in people's minds what the Vancouver Titans are playing for as well you got to remember that they came in uh, as a completely new roster for this for this organization uh, a lot of them playing across the world I know KSA is playing on 200 ping on a regular basis all yeah. over the place uh, this is a team that they need to perform well for their, their tournament, their entire Overwatch League lifeline is on the line with every match that they play. And they have been improving. They have been steadily getting better and better and better. As you can see from their starting lineup, again, nothing out of the ordinary. They don't really have too many players. They don't have anyone, I don't think, that they can replace. <laughs> so they have to roll out with these six players, and it's going to be familiar faces that you are uh, quite, uh, quite certain of seeing. Uh, notable faces being the DPS lineup. I think the DPS duo Definitely. for this team is quite good. It definitely is. Shockwave is up at the top of the league, actually, in terms of solo kills, which speaks a little bit towards the uh, lack of team play, a more individualistic play style of the Vancouver Titans. But Shockwave has genuinely been excellent uh, uh, alongside Dalton, especially when he gets to play the Echo. That's where I think this team can really start to upset teams above them, is when you get Shockwave on those explosive DPS picks. Because although Dalton has been good on the Genji, I feel like Shockwave is, is just... Uh, that powerhouse person. But they're going up against the Gladiators today, yeah. Brent. And this team is just <laughs> wild. Yeah, they, they've been up, they've been down, more often down recently, it feels like, unfortunately. And this statistic was very interesting because the team fight win rate, we normally associate this. If you have a high team fight win rate, it means you win a lot of games. Well, yeah. one of these teams is not like the others. You've got the no. top four of these teams currently with the, the highest team fight win rates. Obviously, the kind of teams that we'd expect. And then the Gladiators are just there. They've just kind of just snuck their way in at the fifth spot here. Uh, it is quite interesting that this team has not been getting the results recently. They've been trying unique cheese strategies all over the bloody shop, and uh, the results haven't quite been there. I'm not going to call them a bottom tier team, but they have not been living up to the expectations that we've set out for them. Yeah, they've been up and down and very inconsistent, and unfortunately they're trending down recently as well. I mean, this is a team that beat Shock earlier on in the year, beat mm -hmm. the Atlanta Reign recently actually, but they've also recently lost to Boston and the Washington Justice too. So this is a team that really needs to get them out of their own slump. And look who is back in the starting lineup on off tank. This is yep, that's right. It is Bishu. They have benched space, something that I never thought would happen. That's there has been a bit crazy, of crazy, right? Yeah, the, there's been some uh, discoordination between OG and Space, but I wouldn't have thought that the answer they came to was Bench in Space because he's been probably their best player, despite yeah. the fact that they've been up and down so far this season. 
Bishu playing, and as well, just to give you some statistics off the back of that, last year Bishu, I believe, played a singular map. Was it a match yep. or a map, Josh? It was one map. It was a yeah. map four game that didn't even matter, where he subbed in for the Guangzhou Charge playing alongside Fraggy. So, yeah. I mean, if you can cast your mind back to that, that was almost an entire year ago. That was July 27th of last year, 2019. You know when he played before that, Bren? You know what the, the next time span? I couldn't tell you. It's got to it, be in 2018, right? Yep, it was the uh, almost a year before that in the quarterfinals, losing to the London Spitfire, who then went on to win the entire championship in 2018. So wow. Bishu's just getting in is one per year to start yeah. out on Li Zhang, I think. That is crazy. Yeah, well, we're starting things off on, on Li Zhang. Uh, I'm excited to see Bishu play back in this roster, but I feel like as well, uh, for whatever the reason the space isn't playing, you've got to say that I think Gladiators are really going to have to play up to the Titans in this regard, I think. Just off the back of the way the Titans have been playing recently, they need to be coming out with something clean. Now, obviously, Kevs is in this lineup. Uh, Kevs, the recent pickup for the Gladiators, his DPS has added a bit more firepower. It was one of Definitely. the more critiqued aspects of this roster um, since its uh, inception this year. So the fact that they have uh, made some adjustments, I suppose, in the run-up to this game by running Bishu now... Is it promising? I, I don't know. We will find out, I suppose. Yeah, I'm interested to see what heroes Bishu decides to play as well, because if they're the same heroes that Space would usually play, that indicates that they want to bring Bishu in, perhaps because he has better team synergy, or he can help coordinate with Birdring or something, because he's uh, he's bilingual, one of the uh, few but incredibly valuable uh, fluent English and Korean bilingual players that we have. That was part of why he was so valuable to the Los Angeles Gladiators back in 2018 mm -hmm. when he used to always start for them as their, uh, their off tank. I I'm just so interested to see what Gladiators turns up today, Brent. Their stats are just all over the place. Their results have been two, and this is an unexpected lineup. Yeah, the Sigma Winston with dive compositions. Uh, this is very interesting, but I suppose... Why not? Normally you see, actually funnily enough in this current meta, a Zarya alongside the Winston, but that's more when you're playing against the Sombra compositions. But we'll see what the Gladiators are able to do with it. You can see OG has dove into the back line here. Shred looks out of position quite a bit here. There's a lot of damage being pumped into either side, but OG will be the first blood. He goes down immediately. Birdering, opting to try and equalize it. The Shredlock will fall. And KSA ends up taking him salve out, I believe, with his, I know, with his hypersphere, his accretion, I don't even know, but... At the end of the day, it feels like the Titans are on the back foot and off the back of these pickoffs. It should be the Gladiators cap. Yeah, Kepster coming in here on the Genji. He's got 64%, outpacing Dalton by a fairly long portion. And even though OG went down, they got the better positioning there. Like you said, Shredlock looked like he was a bit out in the middle of an island. Here, the Immortality Field has already had to be used really early on, and OG continues to pressure. Kaka goes down as well. That's that Discord Orb being put on him. Birdering just shredded him, and now it means that they can take much more aggressive angles. You can see the Gladiators just working in, trying to find the weaknesses, prying them open. They're doing just that. Still in control of the point, and they've got a lot of ultimates built up now as well, which is an important factor. OG has looked at his best so far this season when he's been on the Winston, in my opinion. And he's going to have many opportunities to harass them as they come back in here. Even though both teams are getting up to their ults, the Gladiators are always going to have that opportunity to go aggressive if they want to. Because the Titans are pushing back oh. into them. Nice pressure from Birdring as well. Birdring just able to get so much done on the flank by himself, but Kevster is going to unleash this blade. He gets a single kill, goes for the second one, and he gets it. And that's going to be another one fight there. For the Gladiators, they did end up using quite a few ults, but make no mistake, so did the Vancouver Titans. No more Rally or Amplification Matrix for them. A bit of a, a hard uh, engagement for the Titans, I, I'll be real with you. Uh, now they've only got the Blade and maybe some tank ultimates coming online for them. It's, it's a hard ask. Shoko's made his way over to the Echo, and I think he's going to be pressuring around the back. I, I think he's just aiming Trying to put to pressure them. on their back yeah. lines. Yeah. And really here the key is... He's KSA dead! Oh, he's died. That KSA cannot be allowed to him. happen. That's a disaster for the Titans. They've immediately lost the player. It's going to be, honestly, curtains for them. They flip the point around, but a nice stick there from Bird Ring brings him down. No immortality field. Transcendence is going to be used. Gravitic Flux as the answer, but of course that Transcendence on the side of Gladiators keeps them healthy. Shaz also going to be putting in a bit of his own firepower. Birdering 
collapsing onto the back line. It's going to be a quick recap for the Gladiators here, coming out swinging off the back of that. Well, maybe even have a couple of more ults to, to fend off the Titans here. Yeah, they've got so many... Uh, so many things to be able to work with here. They have the positional advantage. OG and Kevs are about to build up to their ultimates as well. This is just desperation time for the Titans. Blade. They need something huge and there's no way. There's nothing to be done here. The Blade is so clean. It gets a lot of work done despite the fact that there was nothing to really sort of combo with it. No halts, no nanos. It does not matter for Kevs that he's able to clean up. And that's going to be the Gladiators in a very one-sided fashion. Uh, taking that first round in the control. Uh, and this is, I think, a good sign as well. There's probably going to be a lot of Gladiators fans that are watching this and they see space, you know, not being in the starting lineup. Uh, and honestly, you've got to be a little bit worried coming into this. But off the back of that, it's clear that there is some method to the madness, at least. Oh, for sure. I mean... The Gladiators are going to be very comfortable with this kind of setup. Kevster's proven that he can play the Genji at an Owl level. Birdring's back on the Tracer in a dive comp. This is where Birdring was at his absolute best back in, actually, 2017, before the league even began, actually. <laughs> but uh, uh, an OG on the Winston. So it, it does make sense. What I'm more interested in is that the Titans just made that far too easy for the Gladiators there yeah. in round one. There was, there was no opposition. They mismanaged their ultimates. They didn't have a good plan of how to break the Gladiators' comp. So I, I want to see much more from them. They've been promising. The improvements have been there for Vancouver, but not in that first round. We'll see what they can do now. As it's another opportunity for them to, to fight back. Bishu on the Wrecking Ball. And he's going to try and go for a couple of environmental kills. Okay, just swinging around the podium a little bit. OG getting booped off, but the kills, that's okay. Space has been created, and the Gladiators capitalize off the back of it. It's one thing for your main tank to die, but it's another to not even capitalize off the space that he does make. That is thankfully taking full advantage of it. That will be them getting again the first capture here. And what an addition Kevster has been to this team. Yeah, even though really the match good. results have been on honestly pretty woeful recently, all over the place. Not what the Gladiators would have wanted so far at all. Kevster's individual ability cannot be denied. The guys come in and played hit scan and projectile heroes at easily an owl level. Every single hero that has been required of him, he has put up great performances on, and he's using this space alongside Birdring so well. That's a great dive, though. Yeah. Much better for Vancouver as soon as they swap over to the Winston. Just the spam damage coming in from Shockwave! Two kills! Alright, alright, showing us what you're made of here. Birdring's gonna try and clutch something up, but finally the peel comes through, so the heals are there as well. But yeah, that was Shockwave, just putting in that distant damage with the primary fire of the Echo. Again, remember, no damage fall off on that got Shaz very low and they just dove onto him and that opened it up. Yeah, and a ni nice timing and coordination as well from Shredlock and Dalton. It might be a little too late, honestly. Uh, probably not. The Gladiators only got 34% in that first fight. There's a, f a couple of ultimates that are going to be ready to come up here. Kevster's okay. Blade being the first one, but Shockwave's going to reply. And Shockwave's Blades have been great when he's on the Echo. Double Genji on the field? Okay, that's a little bit greedy, but tries to go for the Blade in the end. Turned around though, thankfully. Rolf is there. But the Coalescence to collect a couple of kills off the back of it, so it's going to be a one-team fight here for the Vancouver Titans. It was looking like it could have been pretty uh, pretty one-sided on the other direction after Shockwave just entered his blade into, uh, into the Gladiators, but I think him forcing out those cooldowns like that was really quite pivotal. Yeah, and the space creation that he did. I mean, if you're an Echo and you transform into a Dragon Blade, force out all the abilities and tell your opponents to walk backwards. That's huge. Shredlock, though, has Ooh, taken so, so much damage. He had no idea that the Gladiators were going to engage from the other side as well. And they do have the points still, but at what rate? Because the Gladiators have easily won this team fight out. And Kevson making a switch over to the Echo himself. That's really quite interesting, actually. Moving over to, uh, to the Echo. And Echo, not a character we really have been seeing too much. There was, the, of course, the initial release of her. Uh, when she was playable in the Overwatch League, we saw a lot of Echo. Um, and it seems to be a bit more of a niche pick these days. Yeah, I think she'll still get quite a lot of playtime in this meta currently. Uh, a lot of teams favoring the Genji, but Vancouver are going to come in here and they have so many ults to be able Catches to work one. with. one. Riveting Flux in the back, and that's enough damage. KSA gets the opening pick. It's kind of what they need in that scenario. Shredlock might be able to find something, but Dalton with the blade as well. Shaz falls. The Primal Rage gets the value they were looking for, and at this rate, it feels like it is an inevitability here for the Bank of the Titans. 
They recap up this point. 80% now, Josh. Yeah, this has been a great response from Vancouver. As soon as they swapped over, honestly, to the Winston, that's been the thing that's made the largest impact. Yeah, there were a couple of other swaps around the board as well. Shockwave getting onto a hero that he can have much more impact on. But Shredlock now just looks so much more comfortable. There's a guide, there's a vision to how they're playing. They just need to hold on for this final fight. But Dalton has already fallen. Yeah, Dalton fallen could be a critical pick up here. Pick off. The gladiators. Alt's gonna start to get used here. Bishu lays down the mines on the point. Shockwave gonna be duplicating over to the tracer. It's an unusual pick here because Kevs has moved over to the Winston and he's putting in so much work with the Primal Rage. Two kills for him. There you go. Just gonna be beaming down. Shockwave takes him out. A crucial recontest once again from the gladiators just in the nick of time. I'm sure with the benefit of hindsight, Shockwave would want that duplicate back. He had to go over to the Tracer just because he needed the health. That's part of how you use the uh, Echo Ultimate as well. You sometimes yeah. just have to use it in desperation to keep yourself alive. At that time, he didn't get too much value out of it, and now he doesn't have it for the next fight as well. I'm looking towards OG here. His Primal Rage tech is fantastic, and it's been one of his strengths this entire season. Oh, Kevster gets a better Shockwave! And again, that beam doing so much damage when they get low. OG with the Primal Rage, knocking Kargar into the corners. Taking him out. And that's so many kills. Overwhelming aggression from the Gladiators. Despite the overtime, it is just futile. And the Vancouver Titans are going to be not too pleased, but the Gladiators certainly are taking map number one away from them. Yeah, if you're a Gladiators fan, your doubts have been squashed, at least at the beginning of this series. That's a series. good sign. That is a very good sign. It is a sign. very good sign. Yeah. For them to be subbing in Bishu and play the same heroes that Space would have been playing anyway, just basically full-time on the Sigma, and yet to still look coordinated, arguably more coordinated than they have done in a number of weeks. It's crazy, that's crazy, a That's a good sign for the Gladiators. Yeah. And it's definitely not because Space was the problem. That's a ridiculous conclusion to take from this, but perhaps something about the way that Bishu plays alongside OG is keeping the, the system a little more tight-knit. Yeah, sometimes the play styles just don't quite mesh, even if the players are superstars. Um, and so far from what we've seen, it does feel like the Bishu switch has been working out for them. Uh, and we'll see if they can really keep it uh, moving, struggling along, I suppose. It's interesting, the amount of compositions, the different variations of the meta that we've seen as well across the regions themselves. We're going to find out after the break. Can the Vancouver Titans bring it back? Or will the Gladiators be making it even more one-sided? Don't go anywhere. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by Cheez-It Groups. Deep flavor, deep crunch, it's a mind crunch. And by Zip Chair Gaming, the official chair supplier of the Overwatch League. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Overwatch League. I hope you use that break to get a drink, a snack, maybe, you know, call around the family members. Hey guys, Bishu's playing, Bishu's playing. Well, I got bad <laughs> news for you. Bishu's back out again. They're subbing space back in. The substitutions are being made. The gladiators have decided, okay, that was a cute little experiment. Now we're going to roll out space and we're going to see uh, what kind of difference it makes in this match ahead. Bishu, I think, played pretty well in that first map, so I'm a little bit surprised and a little bit, you know, confused as well as to what exactly the Gladiators are playing out here. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused as well. Mira has come back in for Kevster too, so we're back to the kind of team roster that the Gladiators were fielding right at the beginning of the season, and we're heading on to Temple of Anubis. So, okay, maybe Mira's going to play some kind of uh, heroes that Kevster wouldn't usually. That all makes sense. John Crack. But, but, uh, yeah, I mean, possibly even the Junkrat. Who knows? I mean, Could that's be. a classic Temple of Anubis pick. But it's it's really the off-tank question that's got me puzzled as well, Brent, <laughs> because Bishu, yeah. if he had played some kind of hero that we don't normally see Space playing, then, then maybe. I mean, perhaps it was for the Wrecking Ball. That's the only hero that we don't normally see Space on yeah. that would make any sense. I mean... The Gladiators are also 1-4 and four so far this year on Li Zhang, now 2-4 and four after winning that map against the Vancouver Titans. So, potentially, they just thought they wanted to shake stuff up a little bit. The Winston Ball composition that they ran a little bit on, uh, on uh, the Gardens, I think it was. They just wanted to throw that in there and see if it, uh, see if it shook stuff up a little bit. They came out with the win. Yep, they absolutely did. And as we mentioned at the start, we are going to be heading into Anubis' next map. It's a map where you, you sometimes see some wacky compositions, the junk rat. Uh, I, 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 it's a little hint, okay? I live with Jake in the same house as him. Whenever yeah. an Overwatch League team plays junk rat, he, he always tries to get everyone in the house to go watch the game with him on the sofa downstairs. He gets really <laughs> excited. Uh, he probably doesn't want me saying this because um, he it might, it might get embarrassed. But he, he, sure. yeah, you know, he loves it so much, he just wants to share his joy with with everybody in the house. That's very um, sweet, actually. Yeah, I don't really get it, but uh, you know, it's uh, <laughs> it's his thing. So uh, you know, we, okay. just, we just we just roll with it. You know, he's a nice lad, Jake. He is. He's That's a very, uh, very good boy. Now he's probably going to be tweeting. He's been like, Brent, what are you talking about? Yeah, none of that was true. That was just uh, an anecdote that I made up about some uh, someone in my house. Okay. Well, you know, you could have kept this going for a little bit longer. I I, I would believe it, honestly. I I don't know really whether we're going to see. Um, Junk being played on the defense here. I feel like this meta is pretty open, though, honestly. We've seen teams playing the double shield, and we've seen teams playing a lot of the Winston comps as well. Yeah. And if people try and play dive, then I think it could be a reasonable counter. But I don't know. There's just... There's, there's so much value that you can get out of just brawling with the Genji at the moment that I feel most teams are going to be trying to defend with a long-range hit scan and a Genji instead. I don't know. I'm interested. I'm interested to see what the Gladiators have got cooking up here. They, they have been a wonky team, but so far that first map was pretty default, honestly. They, they looked like they were back to their normal selves. Yeah, not... Uh, nothing out of the ordinary, as you said, but... Could be rolling out with some wacky stuff. No? Okay. This is pretty standard, I think. They run... Yeah, the Rhine, the Sigma. Yeah. Very, um, very standard. Yeah, I mean, Genji mirrored Ash. compositions on both sides and exactly what we were expecting the meta to be coming into this week. We've seen more Winston, but on Temple of Anubis, I think that people uh, kind of dislike playing dive on it these days, especially when your Genji can just get supported by the double shield. So the Gladiators are going to go around the left-hand side. We're going to fight over this mega area. Now, the Genji players in this meta, I think, right now, because Orisa's out of the game, are probably going to have a bit of a harder time of building up these ultimates. Yeah, um, definitely. There's no more halt to, to pull the players together where you can just glide through them with the dash and build up your ultimate really fast. This is huge. Murdering's at an off angle here. It they looks like even, they don't even know. They haven't even spotted him. This is, okay, the, situa uh, the situational awareness of the extinct, extinct dodo, if I can get my words out. I can't. <laughs> There's a little hint for you. But that's going to be opening it up for Gladys. That is really quite confusing, Josh. Yeah, that's a weird one because normally you would either have... Uh, Shockwave try and push Birdring out, or the Vancouver Titans would play very aggressive to try and get out of Birdring's sightline. And instead, they just kind of sat there, and even as Shockwave backed off, he wasn't flicking his shield around, he didn't look like he even... 
realized particularly him. that he was being shot from the back. Yeah, well. uh, pretty weird. I mean, it's not like Birdring hit that many shots anyway, but just Ooh. the constant damage did help. Okay. Our Matrix gets sent down here by Shaz, and I think they tried to send a fire strike through it. Mirror getting in a bit of uh, bit of trouble up top. Eventually backing off. You can see he has his blade a lot sooner than Dalton does, which is kind of odd, actually, considering Mirror is on the attack. Might be opting to use it pretty soon. I think he's trying to bait out some of these cooldowns, and finally Mirror's going to be using the blade here. Stunned up, bashed up. His team are keeping him alive and healthy, but he was just out of range, I believe, for that immortality field. And now this gives the Vancouver Titans plenty of opportunities to roll forward with ults of their own. KSA with a Gravitic Flux. Pumped in enough damage necessary to close out this series, and it's just... Poor little Bob that they're going to be using to farm up their support ults again, taking the damage intentionally. Yeah, Bob he sometimes works for the other side. He's a double agent <laughs> occasionally when <laughs> yeah. you put him out. A paid mercenary. Here's a replay of what happened with Shockwave here. He uh, manages to take out Mirror, and then he's just free farming into these guys that have been lifted up in the Gravitic Flux. There was a lot of ultimates used there for the Vancouver Titans. They popped both defensive, oh, not defensive particularly, but both support ultimates and the Graphitic Flux, but they've still kept a couple in their bag to be able to work with, so if Dalton can get a decent blade off here... Oh, that's huge. Shockwave again coming out clutch, and he's going to go for an aggressive play around the side too. What? Okay, using Bob, and they want to go so aggressive into them. I, I don't know if I agree with this one, but they are just rolling forwards. Bob is in the back line just peppering them. I'm not going to lie, I kind of love this, Brent. Because they've managed to force out the rally from Big Goose. It's got no value, and they helped build up their ultimates as well. KSA now at 40%, Kaka at 40%, and Rolf with another amp matrix. So, this is getting better. A lot of ults, though! And here comes the Gravitic Flux as well. The Gladiators capitalizing off of the aggression. The Titans too far forward, maybe. They thought it was easy for them as well. Especially with what you were saying there, Josh. Big Goose using the rally early in that fight, but now two ticks. Can anyone on the Titans even touch? One person managed to get on their car car, but he will meet his maker soon enough. Shredlock does have the Earth Shad. He's got to go huge of it, though. No, sends it off onto the side. It connects onto nobody. And it is going to be an easy completion. The Gladiators getting three and a half minutes in their time bank. Okay, well, from a decent Ugh, idea wow. to a failed execution there, Bren, because even though I like the idea of playing aggressive, they force out the rally, they use the bob, they build up a couple of their other ults, the bob isn't really that important. They needed to back off when the Ant Matrix and Flux came out from Shaz and from Space, and instead they just kind of ate it, and they were hoping that Dalton would save them with a big dragon blade, but that's not really going to work when you consider the comps that we have playing out here. Uh, you Honestly, know, the, the Dragon Blades aren't going to be as big as they were in the past. Pretty poor form, I think, from the Titans as well. They should have known that the Gravitic Flux was coming up. Uh, and, you know, normally when we're, when we're watching this meta kind of unfold with an Orisa as well, uh, you find that the player's positioning is a lot more disciplined because they're waiting out for these halts. Maybe the lack of Orisa on the field means that these teams have kind of... Uh, uh, I guess change up the rule book in terms of positioning. They were very clumped up there. It allowed them to get an yeah, easy in for the Gladiators. Yep, that was a bit of a weird defense from the Vancouver Titans. Uh, threw it away. And that's that's our, actually what we've been seeing more and more from the Gladiators is them trying to make aggressive plays and falling to pieces. That's one of the reasons why they haven't been performing so well recently. Mm -hmm. But look at this. We were the somewhat rat. right with what we were predicting. Mirror Someone on the Jake. Junkrat. Yes. <laughs> Someone called Jake. Get him on the couch. That joke's still funny. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. Well, yeah, so the, the gladiators are going to be rolling out with the Junkrat. It's which, such a classic Anubis pick. It is, You can yeah. get so much work done here. The tires get built up incredibly quickly. And I think Shredlock might at some point here want to swap over to be playing the Winston That's or the so ball. much fire strike damage. OG's already built up to 30% of his Earth Shatter. Just off the initial, uh, the initial fire strike, and now you can see Mirror lose. Okay, he needs to be a bit of a careful here to dive the dash through. He's getting a lot of value though, Mirror, from his traps. That's the second time he's caught somebody. Not able to convert it into a kill, but he is going to be sending in consistent spam damage here. Titans, I don't really know if I agree with this approach. Walking in a narrow choke point like this, be pretty damaging, as you can see. They're taking a ton of damage from the Dynamite and the Junkrat to spam. Yeah, I'm not really convinced how they break this choke point without the Genji and the Echo. If the Gladiators can just back off from this and kite it. Oh, geez, okay. so weak, though, and he's gone down. Yeah, I don't, I don't oh, know. They just got caught by a single Ant Matrix. The Ant Matrix goes down on all the... I mean, it, 
fight's still not over. I think Birdwing's going to try and even this one out. Attire? Attire, Attire could be huge as well. Here. Mirror, mirror, mirror. Needs to get some pickoffs from it. And he gets dashed and sliced through. It did a bit of damage. Dalton fell very, very low, but unfortunately not enough to bring him down. The gladiators are caught. What is what this is from this? Bird Ring? Mirror with Mirror? two kills with the concussion from his mine. Okay, the gladiators have turned that around. That was the amplification matrix from Shaz. They used it in close quarters, and I bet the Vancouver Titans, I bet they thought that that was just going to be an easy retake for them. And they just get shut down from that. Well, listen. The cornered animal is the most dangerous one, I think is a saying somewhere in the world. Yeah, the uh, the injured dog the bites injured hardest. Dog bites hardest. I don't know. The Look at this. Here's the replay. And Matrix goes down, presumably. Yeah. Yep. What? <laughs> 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 he <laughs> shoot him back through his own man Matrix? I, I don't know if amazing. that was even intentional, but whatever, it works in the end. Gladiators. With a lot of opportunities to hold on even further here. But the Ant Matrix again now being used by the Titans to try and lead and initiate in. It's going to mean the Gravitic Flux gets a ton of value. The Immortality Field keeps him alive. And Shockwave does take out Bob. Nice Earth Shatter from the side there. OG on 100 health. The tire as well. No one can stop it. Mirror with three kills. And that is going to be beautiful. Shockwave, I don't know why you're using your duplicate in that scenario. But Gladiators... Still holding strong here. It's not even final fight territory. I don't know why they're using these ults, but they want to try and turn it anyway. They do get a kill onto Mirror. The pick on Mirror is actually pretty big, though, especially because Dalton got out, and now the whole of Vancouver are ready to push, apart from Shockwave. Yeah, this could be but a 5v5 scenario definitely favors the uh, Vancouver Titans. And Mirror's gone over to the Echo here, because he knows he's not going to get back in time. So many ults to them as well. Gravitic Flux is going to be connecting onto so many of them, three of them in the air. The Immortality Field will keep them alive. The Matrix. Fantastic by Shaz. Again, the placement of it. It gave them enough firepower to just battle them back. And Shockwave tries at the dregs of the fight to try and turn it around into something nice. Sort of Accretion there from space as well. That should have been the Titans fight. They had so many ults to work with then. Everything. The yeah. Earth Shadow, the Gravitic Flux, the Blade, which they didn't use. But that should have been theirs to convert. They're going to be kicking themselves. Both teams are finding it quite difficult to back off from Ant Matrixes. And here we go again. Rolf is about to have another one online. He's probably going to go for the exact same play. Just post up at the Mega, pop the Ant Matrix, and try and shred OG. But they look like they're very aggressive here, the Gladiators. Done it again. Oh, what is huge. this? The aggressive Gravitic Flux is huge. Space with two kills. The Gladiators, they are just going to be sealing the deal. They were a bit annoyed that they had to get up early for this match and they wanted over in as quick of a fashion as humanly possible. Map number two going their way with the full hold down on Anubis. And you flip a coin and you see which gladiators you get in a match and it seems like we've got the great gladiators today because yep. they are just wiping the floor with the Vancouver Titans. These maps have not been close. There have been moments, there have been some mistakes from the gladiators, but generally speaking, they are dominating a team that we thought was on the rise. There are some people, very reasonably I think, predicting the Vancouver Titans to win this match, anticipating the gladiators to still be in their slump where they're losing to... Yeah. Justice and this kind of stuff. I 100% thought that the Vancouver Titans were going to be the favourites coming into this match because of what we've seen yeah. recently from the Gladiators. The, the quality yeah. of play has not been up to scratch, but they're showing that they can turn it around. Give it enough time, the Gladiators will eventually battle back. And even when they're running Bichu in the lineup, instead of Space, one of their best players. But we're going to find out what our analysts now have to say as we're going to be heading into a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to have the game break. Don't go anywhere. You don't want to miss it. We've got the whole gang ready. They've got notes. They've got details. They've got essays. Don't want to miss it. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Switch today and rank up to America's largest 5G network, T-Mobile. And by State Farm. For auto, home or renter's insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there.
Hello and welcome to our first game break of the day presented by Pringles Wavy. So here joined by Costa and Reinforce and currently the LA Gladiators are up to an O. Now, not a huge surprise, but it is great to see the Gladiators kind of being back in their, you know, final form. I don't know, but they're looking dominant again. And that's what we all expected to see, given uh, the, the strength of that roster, given how star started that lineup is Custa. They did make a lot of uh, switches. We saw subs coming in for the second map. We saw uh, an, an unusual starting six. What are your thoughts on those substitutions? This is the kind of things, if they were 0-2, I would I would take this moment to rip into them. But these guys are 2-0. And they look really good. Bishu <laughs> played really well in the first half. I don't, I, I'm not going to pretend, uh, pr uh, pretend to predict why Bishu was in this lineup because he just played Sigma and we know Space has a very solid Sigma. But he played incredibly well. He was aggressive. He was shutting down the flanks. This was not a close map at all. The times were really strong. We add that with OG on the Winston. He is one of the best Winstons that we have in oh, this yeah. league. And you just see it. Look at the, these primals that he has are just always top tier. Always impressive. And then we go into map two, and all of a sudden we put space back in, uh, and then we put Miri in. I was super confused. Kevsa played so well on the Genji and the Echo that we saw them out completely outplaying Shockwave. And then they put Miri in, and I was confused about that as well, but I think it's because of the Junkrat on the defense. And it's another one where I would usually question it. Junkrat's not a too hard of a character, but Mira saved them like multiple times on this on this map with his crazy junk rap plays and just you know 3k tires double kills through ampli amplification matrixes so i i can't really bash on the gliders they're playing incredibly well this is the team that we want to see well, I really? feel like Costa just summed up, you know, pretty much the entire game break. So, so yeah, I guess we got. <laughs> well, no, I, no, <laughs> I, I, I need you to talk about the Vancouver Titans, uh, given yeah. their performance from yesterday and also what we saw uh, today. Do you feel like they're maybe not reactive enough in game? I mean, they they have changed up things a little bit going into this series because we're seeing Shockwave on the Echo for the most part and Dalton on the Genji. But I have a big issue with that because I feel like both of those heroes are pretty reactionary heroes, right? Because if you're a Genji, you want to make sure that the targets are low so you can dash in, get some dash resets and get out. Similarly, an Echo cannot really initiate that well because what you want to have happen is that your enemies get low and then you come up with sticky bombs and then you can use your focusing beam to focus people down. The thing is... Neither of those two heroes really like open up the door for these fights for each other, right? So what you're seeing is the Vancouver Titans, they are going into these fights and they're trying to find a win condition. But they have no one to set up that win condition for them. So I'm a bit disappointed by the composition that the Vancouver Titans are opening for. I can understand that some maps in this pool, maybe you want to play Echo and Genji because of their verticality. But for the most part, I'd rather just see Dalton on the Tracer and then maybe see Shockwave on the Genji or the Echo. Try to force that instead so you can have Dalton poke and prod, maybe get some people low or maybe even capitalize on people being low. But instead, you're seeing the Vancouver Titans really struggle because they're not really finding any win conditions to begin with with this composition well speaking of finding win conditions that leads me to our crunch time presented by pringles wavy costa there was one particular moment on anubis where bird ring just uh, kind of got a free shooting scenario maybe you want to walk us through this yeah, so uh, Birdring puts on his invisibility cloak at the start here, and you'll <laughs> see him walk in through the front door, and he gets this off angle that the Vancouver Titans just seem to not even realize what's going on, and he's just absolutely free shooting, completely opens his up with all the damage. And I, the thing I want to praise about this is we knew that the Vancouver Titans were going to play this way on their defense on first point Anubis because this is what they did against the Paris Tunnel yesterday. They played with blind aggression. They were catching them in a choke before the Paris Tunnel could set up. The Gladiators adapt to this. They let Birdering in. They knew that he was going to go completely unchecked and they get the first point because of it. If this was actual scouting by the Gladiators, you've got to give them props because that is a great play. Getting that point for free is absolutely insane because you saw how easily it was for them to walk into the second point and get a ridiculous time. Well, as, a, think, as uh, a former pro player, how aggravating is it to see an entire team not even turning to where uh, Birdring stands, not well, even glancing or looking. Is it? I mean, Birdring had like an invisibility cloak or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, he couldn't <laughs> be seen, so how can you react in the first place? <laughs> yeah, I didn't take exactly. that into consideration, I guess. So, uh, you're right. Uh, well, guys, this uh, this was already our uh, game break. Let's see if the Gladiators can actually just finish it up on that third map. Or maybe we're going to see a started a comeback from the Vancouver Titans as we're heading over to Watchpoint Gibraltar. And for all the action, I once more send it back to Bren and Sideshow. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Pringles Wavy. Big crunch, big flavor.
The Overwatch League is brought to you by HyperX. Unleash your style, unleash your fury. With HyperX Fury Memory. And by Coca-Cola, the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Qui derrière, on arrive quand même à enchaîner avec quelque chose. Rulf, qui était tombé en premier, euh, va se faire plaisir. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Overwatch League. Hope you enjoyed that little game break as well, despite the fact that Custer uh, tried to steal all the analysis, you know, just he thinks he's so cool <laughs> now because he's, you know, he's got this fancy new internet and he's wearing a cool burgundy shirt. Listen, you sound was, a bit jealous, bro. If I was on that desk, I'd reel him in, Josh. I'd reel him right, in. Right. I'd be putting an right. end to it. You know what I mean? Actually, wow, well, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I would be the one talking all the time. Who knows? Anyway, we've got, we got a couple of subs. Uh, I say a couple of subs. We've got Mira is going to be uh, vacating the server, and Kevs is coming back in, and uh, it makes a lot of sense considering the map that we're going to be going on to as well. Yeah, we're heading over to watch Punch Gibraltar. Going to be anticipating seeing OG a lot of the time on that Winston role that he's been playing so well, especially on Li Zhang, and that probably means that Kevs is going to be picking back up the Genji. And I agree with the desk. Mira was good. Uh, Mira saved them a bunch of times with uh, pretty decent Genji play, and then very good clutch junk rat play as well uh but this is the roster that i want to see most of the time mm -hmm. um space as well had a great performance just came in and demolished on sigma so this is now <laughs> just a roster that seems to be gelling very well together but it's so frustrating bren to see the gladiators perform very well this week because i don't know about you but it, this hasn't repaired my trust in them I still have trust issues with the Gladiators. Well, I'm going to okay. need to see them over the course of multiple weeks to repair the, the, the deep Here's, fissure that they've caused to me. Let me prompt you an idea, okay? I, I want to get your brain juices flowing for this okay. one. Okay. Because right. what if the reason the Gladiators are looking more comfortable now playing a variety of compositions is because OG's comfortable playing the Reinhardt and Winston more often? Now that Orisa is yeah. like forced out of rotation, I think it, it could be a big reason as to why the Gladiators are so Jekyll and Hyde, so one way and the other. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I, I think it could play into it. What, what do you think? I mean, I prompted a question yeah. to you, but I'm going to keep I, talking so you can't get an opportunity to. I think that's a good point. I think that the Gladiators have definitely looked weaker in the uh, Orisa kind of metas when OG can't pop off but yeah the general coordination between og and space has been pretty off for a lot of weeks now and i think we're starting to see that be repaired a little bit in this match they've the entire team has really looked like they're on the same page they've got a vision of how they want to play like Custer was breaking down on anubis they've got some specific scouting reports of how the vancouver titans like to play and ways of breaking that too so it's it's looked pretty positive so far this week my point was more so, though, Brent, that I need to see this extended. And yeah, I would really like to see it continue into Arisa Metas as well. The Gladiators are the kind of team that should be aiming for a... They should be aiming to repeat what they did in the last two years. They should be aiming for top five finishes. But yeah. they have been falling pretty short. Nevertheless, hopefully. this has been a fantastic match for them so far. Yes, hopefully this is the, the starting point of something new. Uh, the rebirth of the old Gladiators. That said, this doesn't make too much sense, but... We rule of you. Not a lot of what I say does. So, I'm gonna start rolling out of the gates. <laughs> don't, don't tell the people that, Brent. They'll get onto you. They'll clock on. <laughs> They're already threatening to make omelets out of me, so I don't know what they do to you. Probably put me in some weird 90s movie. Throwback. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You look like you've just come out of a boy band from the 90s with that hair, dude. <laughs> The Vagum Titans are going to be on the defense running uh, a pretty standard composition, actually. You want the Winston... D what is this by Hello? Hillary? Hello? We're going on a marathon, maybe? He's he locking the legs and he's going for a sprint. He he's... <laughs> Hey, where is he going? He's gone all the way around to the high ground. Yeah, okay, but they have no idea about this now. Birdering is going to be detracting so much attention uh, to the backline, and Shockwave has to play closer to the team. Look where Shockwave is now. This he is has so to play good. closer to his team because of this. So Birdering has Locking taken away the, the high ground. 
He's locked in the legs, and these these kind of niche strategies, that is what <laughs> the gladiators are known for. And now this the gladiators, so they can capitalize off of this because they have to deal with but What? Okay. Dalton takes him out. Uh, the stray shuriken, but Kevster's own blade will find the pick off down to Kaka. He even trades. Not a clean fight by anyone's uh, metric or measuring stick. And we'll see if the gladiators can close this one out in the end because they are taking a, a decent amount of time to try and get a lot of these pickoffs. But they have got all of the position in the world, though. The Vancouver Titans are going to try and push this one out, and they've got a bunch of ults to be able to work with, but Birdring's back on the trace, and we've seen what he can do on that hero. Well, this is good, though, because the Bob is now going to start contesting the card even further. The Dynamite around the corner is going to be taking a ton of damage. The Coach Gun's pushing them away, but it looks like the Gladiators are getting the better of this team fight. See KSA went down pretty early on there. OG with the Primal Rage. Great mechanics on Winston. A, a role he's incredibly comfortable on. A little surprising that Dalton didn't try to invest the blade to turn that around earlier in the fight. When Kaka first used his rally, I was expecting Shredlock and Dalton to bust out with their ultimates. But instead, they kind of just let go of checkpoint A, and now they've given up high ground That's as well nasty. in B, and this is the worst. This is probably the worst map to give up momentum on in point B. Yeah, and that D-mech on KSA as well, that's going to hurt them. It's going to literally buy so many seconds for the Gladiators. Look at this, man. They're just sending in everything to collapse onto the high ground. Now that's perfect synergy between OG and Space as well. And Birdring coming in for the cleanup too. This is the Gladiators with specific strats for point A on Anubis and now on Gibraltar, dominating the momentum into point B. It's all looking good. It's all is, coming up purple. Yeah, this is so good for Gladiators because the Titans, the worst place to be stalled out is here. The worst place to lose your footing and lose that momentum is right here. But Birdwing's going to be standing to try and pepper them in the background. He's going to go down to the Dynamite, surely. Oh, I think he got the health pack in the nick of time. Kevster, though, busting out the blade, missing a couple of swipes. Finally gets the kill, gets two more. I gets two in total. And that is going to be more an easy zero. win for them. Look at this, almost five minutes. Yeah, and this is so clean from the Gladiators. It's a weird comp, I must admit, with the Winston and the Sigma. But you just take so much space with the Sigma, and then the dives have been great with Birdring, Kevster, and OG. This is kind of what people envisioned when they saw OG and Birdring on the same team, and then adding Kevster into the mix is just... It's, it's beautiful to watch when it all works well. And my god, is it working well today. A lot of damage being set into them. Shaz being harassed in the backline. Has to use the Transcendence early. But might be able to make the most of it. He's still got that Discord Orb actually there onto Shredlock. So they were able to force out his Primal Rage whilst he was Transcendencing. Small little niche mechanic there and Dalton falling as well. Shredlock going down. Not an ideal scenario. Not the situation that the Titans wanted to find themselves in. And now Space, Gravitic Flux is going to be preventing them from even touching the cart. Three minutes, 45 seconds on uh, Gibraltar. What do, you, what do you even say about that? I mean, the Titans oh just are getting rolled over. This is not close in the slightest. And I feel like it would have been close if the Gladiators didn't have specific ways of breaking point A on Anubis yeah. and on Gibraltar. If the Vancouver Titans were allowed to play their own game, then I think this would have been a closer match. But the Gladiators have knocked them onto the back foot really early on in these maps and then just kept putting the pressure on and the titans are reeling they can't find their footing at all they're just getting battered back over and over again the momentum is just so strong from the gladiators and the, I, I mean there's not much more to be said the gladiators are just dominating this series this is gonna be an easy 3-0 unless the titans pull out some miracle we'll see what they can do Titans are going to have to pull out a miracle. We're going to have to clean up some of their play at least. Uh, some notable moments though from Gladiators here. Birdring going for his 20 mile sprint. Yeah. <laughs> the initial start of the what, round. What a, what a great strat though. And yeah. It's Birdring both times being put into positions behind the enemy team on Anubis and now on Gibraltar. And it's not something you expect as the Vancouver Titans defending. So it's not something that you try and stop. You know, your players are positioned to stop the most usual forms of attack. You don't... You, your players aren't positioned to stop a Soldier 76 sprinting into your backline. <laughs> you know, maybe Shockwave should have realized that he got behind and tried to duel him instead, but... Uh, as it was, they just weren't expecting it whatsoever, and Birdring got the jump on him. 
Oh, it's a great play. Yeah. Yeah, it was. P truly. I mean, the Gladiators have been just so well known over the course of their entire lifetime in, in the Overwatch League. Just pulling out those niche cheese strategies. Cheese, if, if you want to call it cheese, sometimes it's a bit disingenuous because they are quite inventive. But the issue is they uh, sometimes they don't really work a second time. So Yes, that's a very good point. I mean, I don't think these would work a second time. And to use them against the Vancouver Titans is a bit strange, but... Starting out this defense pretty well as well. Third ring again running the Soldier 76, by the way, which is kind of strange because you would expect this pick to just be a niche thing that was specific to getting that flank on attack. But instead, they're just valuing his consistent damage Ooh. from the high ground. He has to peek in that corner on 100 HP. It's so brave of him. Oh, Shaz. A lot of damage. So weak. Oh, Shaz. Ooh, okay. He's good. He's good. Dodge the dynamite. A little bit worried then, but he's okay. Kevster is causing all sorts of havoc as well. Look at this dive attempt and they're trying to synergize something going on with OG as well. Gonna try and dive back onto the high ground. So far I've seen no aggressive plays by the Titans. No, no real movement being made, but space goes down. It's a great opening for them. The Titans might be able to capitalize, but unfortunately Shockwave goes down almost immediately afterwards. Now, Dalton is getting some free captured time. Hello? Hello? Anyone? Okay. OG's gonna be touching the point there. Pulling very low though, so he's gonna have to throw his body the wind, Hello. not getting any value really out of it, and they see night. Oh my god, they, they, they see night and, and use trance. And we we were gassing up the gladiators, Josh, and like clockwork, it just, yep, just comes crumbling okay. down. All right, that, yes, that was pretty poor. Uh, space was too far ahead on the Sigma, but he was, he was caught out. It was actually just like some nice slow map control by the Vancouver Titans to get the first pick on space, but then they just couldn't decide who was supposed to touch the point or how to adjust their positioning from there. I, I, I'm hoping that that's only the first uh -oh. mistake and the first and only mistake from the Gladiators, but the Vancouver Titans and all of their fans will be just looking to keep the pressure on. See if they Force can force bomb? out some more. Nice stick straight onto Shaz. Great target being found there. And of course, no Baptiste being ran, so there was no Immortality Field to save that stick. Bigger's gonna have to use a Rally to try and engage, or try and win this fight, but you can see a lot of ultimates being committed now by the Vancouver Titans. They want to try and seal this one. They want to try and win this team fight outright. They're gonna do just that. Gravitic Flux from KSA was more than enough to just slam in the damage and the rest of the team to clean up around them. And this is and gonna be great a snowball, to be honest. Okay, a little bit of a touch here from Bird Ring as he is gonna be able to contest, but for how much longer? Not much longer. Five minutes. That's what they got. Oh, G uses Primal. Oh, Josh, it's oh, crumbling before our very it's eyes. Happening. Oh, these are just terrible errors of timing coming out from the Gladiators. Oh. They C9 didn't and, and use Trance on point A, and then they lose point B and use Primal. Oh, and this blade. is all falling to pieces. The blade must be huge. Kevster must get value in order to turn this around. He's put in a lot of damage. And if they can pick up this kill onto Shredlock, then it will be a worthwhile blade. You can see Birdering trying to chase it down. Has to use this recall. Now opting to try and take down Dalton, but they don't get the kills. Still, they've stopped the fight for the time being, but at what cost? Okay, deep breath, Gladiators. You've managed to stem the bleeding for the moment, but the Titans are going to be straight back into this. So the momentum is only stopped for a moment here. They cannot afford the ki these kind of mistakes. Great stick from Birdring. Nice stick, yeah. That's a great kill onto Shredlock, especially when the Titans were committing ultimates. You can see that Amp Matrix got used. Everyone diving into them here, trying to take out a couple of more members of the bank of the Titans. If they can get them on the tail, and Whoa, okay, going to be committing the rally here. They want to try and fight this one. I can respect it, they're pretty healthy right now. And they found a pick up onto Big Goose. Okay, could be the turnaround they were looking for. Space gonna be falling as well. The Gladiators, this was looking good for them, but now it's just turned around against them. OG goes down as well at the tail end. Say, is it, it's, it can't be happening, Josh. Well, they are just rolling forwards here. OG's died with 88% towards his primal rage. Flux comes out from KSA as well. Oh, Big Goose no. has fallen. There is a transcendence still being used here though. Oh, OG is going to be the last hope of his primal. OG has to clutch right now with his primal rage. He has to come up big. He's to try and pump in some damage, try and disrupt them if he can, but he's taking so much damage. And now switching over to the stall characters, the stall heroes. Space on the wrecking ball, but not enough. And the bank of the Titans. I mean, yes, the Gladiators, they finish with a bit more on the time bank, but that is such a rapid time to answer back with. It was essentially a non-stop snowball from the start of the game all the way to that final checkpoint. Yeah. 
I mean, I said at the beginning of that round that the Vancouver Titans were out of this series unless a miracle occurred, and it seemed like... Uh, I, I don't know. So, uh, someone just fiddled with the the brains of the Los Angeles Gladiators players on defense because yeah. that was a... I, I keep I said this at the beginning of the match. You flip a coin and you see what Gladiators team you get. Well, we've had the amazing Gladiators team this whole series so far, and then that final defense, they fell to pieces. Just so many mistakes. And I want to be clear to our audience as well here, Bren, the kind of mistakes, because there's a concept in tennis called unforced errors. And it's basically when you make a mistake that has nothing to do with your opponent being good. You just made a you just made a mistake. You just hit the ball into the net, and that's what the Gladiators did over and over on that defense. It wasn't like the Titans were pressuring them harder than they have been throughout the course of the match. They just fell to pieces yeah. defending point A, wasted their transcendence. Fell to pieces defending point B, wasted their primal rage. Constantly just reeling because they couldn't get themselves in position quick enough and were failing their ultimates. So many unforced errors there from the gladiators. Time to take a deep breath and try again. Bank of the Titans have been given a moment of respite. They've been given an opportunity, a window. We'll see if they can capitalize again. Two minutes? It seemed like a lot of time, but and what they can get done, KSA getting dove upon here. Great turnaround and aggressive defense here from the Gladiators, but they lost Bird Ring. Still, he is going to be able to blink his way back into the front line, so it's not the worst player in the world to lose here. Kevster having to dash back just to try and contest the card a little bit. Give him a bit of a threat here with the Shurikens, which he's sending out, as you can see. It's looking slightly better for Gladiators. No real bad errors. Yeah, and they held actually on point A for quite a reasonable amount of time. Last time it was Space that ended up dying because he was determined to hold on to the high ground. This time he's dropped already, Ooh, taking a position more around server room. Out of position a little bit. Almost fell uh, very low, almost became a casualty, but he still alive, able to create a bit of space now as he's going to be diving straight into them. So weak though. Is there any sort of follow-up? Yes, his team's coming in, backing him up in the end with the heals, the immortality field, and they're putting in the damage, they're putting in the work. Forcing the Transcendence. Primal Rage now going to be utilized. Just try and disrupt, juggle them around in close quarters. Kevster though trying to answer back with a blade of his own. And now Shredlock forced to try and meet the best of his team. Trying to defend them, trying to peel away. A lot of Rally Armor being pumped on top of him as well. It could be anyone's game in this scenario. The traits are so equal on either side. Kevster might have to come up huge. Finally, Dalton falling means that the Titans may have to reassess what they're doing, and with only 10 seconds left, I think it might be too late. Yeah, I'm not sure there's anyone even here to touch, to be honest. Kaka's coming out, his rollout, the zippy little man. Oh, and the shockwave and Kaka have managed to get there. Gravitic flux onto the car. is there, but this is too little too late, well, unfortunately. Immortality field. I don't want to call it just yet, because OG does go down here, but KSA falling means that that's probably going to be curtains. Only a few... Yeah, a few stragglers are left alive. Shredlock being the last one standing, he will fall as well, which means that the Gladiators are going to get that hold just after that car wash section where the, the cart rolls yeah. through. Uh, still a winnable scenario for the Titans. I don't want to call it yeah. curtains just yet. It, it is winnable, and I actually like the adaptations that we saw from both of those teams. The Gladiators did not put their supports on the blue box high ground. Um, everybody played in server room instead. So space is in a... More passive, but more defendable location, mm -hmm. as is their backline. The Titans, though, actually executed a very good dive. Shredlock was in, used his bubble really well. Uh, the Immortality Field was great to be able to allow Shredlock the time to build up to his Primal Rage. Uh, I think that if Shaz hadn't used his Trance, or if Ra Big Goose had been a little late on the rally, that fight definitely could have gone the way of Vancouver. Um, so... Good adaptations from both teams. Decent play from both sides. And as you say, Bren, it has become a winnable situation for the Titans. But it's definitely the Gladiators favored here. Are they going to try the same thing where they run Birdring behind? Surely not. That's a one-time strategy against an opponent. You would think not. But uh, we'll see. The Gladiators... <laughs> They have a lot of time to work with, make no mistake. Two minutes, 38 seconds to push at a short distance is 100% a winnable goal. But, uh, I mean, we've watched enough Overwatch, Josh. We know how quickly that time bank can just be whittled down. 
um, depending on the speed at which you like to play here. Birdring is not going to be running the soldier, so not going to be going for the same strategy where they try and pull the line of sight and attention away from them. Going to be going for something a bit more standard, a bit more classic here with the Genji Tracer. Yeah, going to have Space try and move his way up towards the high ground. Zoji and Kevster dive, and Birdring just continues to push the payload, I think. Titans are in quite an aggressive position. Just want to get Shockwave in the best areas to do damage. They're going to need Dalton to contest the payload, though. They can't allow too much free push. I'm going to try and remove them from the high ground. You can see the Titans do not want to give it up. And the card is slowly getting pushed into the final objective here, which means that the Titans might have to back off. But they don't want to give up this high ground. I think they realize that if they give it up, that's realistically probably going to be... No, 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 no. Okay, okay, good. They are paying attention. It's, it's Dalton's job to go down and contest that. So I think he's going to be aware Ooh. of it. They get a pick off onto OG. So this is not bad for the Titans, I've got to say. I think this is smart. They don't try and take an early fight, or an early engagement. They wait for the cart to get as close as humanly possible. They're playing it riskily. It's right on a nice edge, but admittedly it works out because now there's only a minute remaining for the Gladiators here. If Birdring wins a 1v1 against Dalton, it's all going to be over, I think, because the Titans will panic and lose their high ground. But as it is, Dalton's done a very good job at holding strong. And now they're fighting over control of high Blue ground. Box, and Shockwave's gone down. Shockwave goes down. The Ant-Mage is going to get unleashed onto the high ground, but I don't know about that angle. They're just going to work a, a, around it, really, just playing the line of sight. Gravitic Flux connects onto only the one target, but there's the blade from Kevster now. Rally going to be committed. Primal Rage just to stun up Kevster. Push him into the corner. Someone needs to touch this cart, though. It's dangerous scenario right now for the Titans. This is the series on the line for them. But look at that. The Transcendence gets committed here by Shaz. And that oh, was at the tail no. end of the fight. Mistakes. Critical mistakes. Uh, arguable that you would want to keep those players up because then the Vancouver Titans can't retake the high ground. 20 seconds, the Josh. But there's only 20 seconds. And I think they're going to want that trans back. But there's, there's still ults here available. OG's primals have been known to get multiple kills in the past, and there's a rally as well. So hope is not lost. Gladiators oh. can still win this series right here. They still have it. Bob, though, Shockwave going to send it in. That's going to contest the point. No, Bob gets battered back, actually, by the Primal Rage. So they're not going to be there to contest the point, which means they have to play a little bit more forward. That gives the Gladiators a bit of an edge in this fight. Can they press the advantage? Can they get the win? Birdering popping off on the sidelines here. They have to consolidate. They have to find these pickoffs. Birdering again with another one. Kevster, the DPS duo for the Gladiators, coming up huge right now. Finding so many pickoffs. And with the overtime finally burning, eventually they will get what they came for. And they will win this series out in a 3 0. But my goodness, do they have to work for it? They definitely had to work for it. A lot sloppier. Honestly, once it got to Gibraltar as well, mistakes from players that we had previously say, seen good performances from earlier on in the match. I think that final Primal Rage from OG, battering away to Bob, forcing Titans to contest the cart with their own yeah. bodies, may have just been the winning play for them. I know that sounds yeah, weird to say, winner. but that's, a, that's one of those game winners. I don't know if it was intentional. I'm assuming it maybe was. Yeah, I think so. I definitely think so. I mean, people have... People have been putting a large focus on displacing the bobs, actually. You see Brigidas do it a lot with the whip shots, too. Yeah. So I, th I think that's definitely a calculated play by OG, too. Really great in the final moments there, but they do seal the deal. It was it was getting sweaty for a second. I'm sure the Gladiators fans were, were feeling it. They're like, oh, is the air conditioning on? I don't know. Uh, that was turnable in so many scenarios. And how many times have we seen teams throw away, uh, throw away a lead like that? Yeah. And then suddenly... The, the kind of their mental is ruined for the for the rest of the series and next thing you know you're in reverse sweep territory so it was crucial that they uh, put it out right then and there it did just that so not bad yeah not not bad but not, not bad perfectly clean either and so even though the gladiators played a much better game than i was expecting coming into this i think that there are still some weird bits and bobs going on here yeah, our player of the match, of course, is going to be... Uh, well, I say of course, maybe it isn't quite obvious, but we're going to no. be going with Shaz for this one. Uh, and the reasons being, I think the Amplification Matrix and the Immortality Fields played a huge part, at least earlier on in this series, um, into the success of this team and how uh, much they got done, realistically. I think 
the lack of Lucio being played is probably hurting some of these teams, not being able to disengage out of the way of the amplification matrix. Um, but it just meant that Shaz had a really good game. Yeah, specifically early on in the series as well, though, because he, like a lot of the other Gladiators players, made a bunch of mistakes on that oh, final yeah. and map, too. Yes, he did. Yeah, so uh, I think the whole of the Gladiators as a roster needs to make sure that they have that consistency. It seems to be a mental thing as well for the Gladiators because they looked great in the first two maps, and then they looked great for the majority of that final map, yeah. and then it all fell to pieces it, at the end. I think and it, probably... it ended up being really close probably feels like we're being quite harsh to gladiators if anybody's listening into this as well but i think the reason we're being harsh you know is you know the reason we're being critical is because we know that this team is capable of much greater heights than oh, yeah. what they've recently showcased and we want to see that you know i'm sure you guys are fans at home of the Elports league of this team Maybe you want to see that as well. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, a reminder, this is a team that came top five, 2018, 2019, and people thought they had upgraded their roster coming into 2020. Yeah. They had really high expectations coming into this year. And so far, they've beaten the shock early on. It all looked good. And they've been on a bit of a downward trend with a lot of inconsistency recently. This is a good first step, a 3-0 win over the Vancouver Titans. Um, let's just make sure that it continues into the future and then they'll start gaining my trust back, Brent. <laughs> I, I mean, these wins are incredibly necessary, I think, in terms of the, if you look at the grand scheme of things, because Gladiators, obviously their recent showings, losing to some teams that they should have been beating, um, not fantastic, and, and for the, the overall standings, they haven't been looking too hot. So getting good seeding in the upcoming tournament obviously going to be one of their priorities but Definitely. you can't forget as well about the grand finals is going to be coming up as well you want to have a good positioning uh, and setting yourself up your team up for success by getting those wins where you can oh yeah absolutely and the gladiators are still in a position where they can make a deep run towards the end of the season pick up some wins a good placing in this final tournament would be huge for them as well and the the playoff structure is going to allow for teams to make deep runs from lower seeded positions too so uh, you want to make it as easy as possible for yourself but it's all still yeah. it, it, you can still make those miracle runs as the gladiators well know because the london spitfire in 2018 started one of those miracle runs against them with uh with bushu playing funnily mm -hmm. enough as well yeah, we've got a, as you can see in your, your lower section of your screens, we've got an interview coming up pretty shortly. Um, I'm not too sure who that is who's going to be conducting the interview. I hope it's Zoe, because she's been criticizing my hair, Josh. She's been really? saying, it doesn't, I, listen, you know, quarantine's been rough. I didn't get a haircut when the, when the, the barbers were open. Uh, when when the, the hairdressing places were open sure i made a mistake maybe oh maybe you could just say i was being overly responsible who knows i don't know but the point is i haven't left my room in three months and listen <laughs> i made the joke at the start but it really does feel like at certain points i'm gonna start raising young crows in my hair because it's it's getting out of hand it's like kind of i did comb it as much as zoe thinks i didn't okay and i'll be hearing I, i'm hoping that i hear some sort of comeback as well from this okay okay yeah the this this tweet as well I'll, I'll be honest, this made me giggle. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, when I saw this, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, sure, if you want to associate this kind of hairstyle with the 90s, that's all well and good. But the the, the young youths of today are also wearing this hairstyle, so. Uh, are they really? Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. you do like look me. like you've just flown out of a 90s boy band. Nah. Yeah, I, I'm absolutely sure that you can't sing, and I don't want you to give a demonstration <laughs> either. Okay. <laughs> but well, we could not have more opposite hairstyles if we tried. Well, our interview's ready. Zoe has got bird ring, and, uh, and yeah, Zoe, what have you got to say other than stuff about my hair? <laughs> well, I think you look delightful uh, for a 90s boy band crew member, so uh, keep on at it, Ben. Uh, for now, let's just uh, welcome our guests, bird ring, as well as Andrew, joining us for some translation. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello. Well, first of all, of course, Birdring, congratulations on that victory. It was great to see uh, the Gladiators being uh, this dominant force again. Uh, Bren and Saicha both said, like, there are a lot of expectations on that roster because it is so star-studded. However, there have been inconsistency issues. Uh, do you guys feel like you figured out what the problem was? And if so, do you want to share uh, what you've been working on? <웃음> 어 저희 팀이 이제 선수들이 잘한 선수들이 많아가지고 이제 팬들의 기대치가 되게 높은 편인데 어, 그래도 시즌 도중에 저희가 좀 오르란 내리라고 말 했잖아요 이길, 때, 이길 때도 있고 질 때도 있고 어좀좀 불규칙적인 그건 모습을 많이 보여줬는데 좀 고칠 어 그걸 어떻게 그 고치도록 노력을 저희가 했나요? 어 일단 팀적인 얘기를 많이 해보려고 저희 
네, 어, 많이 시도를 했었고 어, 네, 최근에는 이제 좀더좀더 좀더 많이 그 문제에 대해서 저희도 인지하고 있기 때문에 고쳐보려고 많이 시도를 했고 어, 그래서 오늘 그래도 좀 좋은 결과가 나온 것 같아요. Okay, so yeah, we we as a team um, know that we have a, a consistency issue, so. We as a team talked a lot of, um, about that issue, and then we tried a lot of different things, um, and then I think we it's, it's working out now, and then that's why we were able to win, uh, you know, in a dominant fashion today. Uh, we're seeing a lot of substitutions coming in and out from your teams today. Uh, are those just completely preset uh, map based, or are there uh, some last minute changes coming in as well for you guys, just based on what's happening in game? 어, 저희가 오늘 그 선수 교체를 많이 했었, 했었는데 그게 미리 정하고 그러니까 이 맵에 누가 뜰지 미리 정하고 한 건가요? 아니면 이제 마지막에 바꾼 건가요? 저희가 저희는 보통 이제 미리 미리 준비를 해서 이제 경기에 들어가는 타, 편이죠. Yeah, so, yeah, so it was already a preset um, who's gonna play what map, so it wasn't a last minute decision. Right on. Uh, well, now we're gonna ignore that Gibraltar might have looked a little bit more shaky. Uh, overall, uh, you look like you're back to your form again. Now, your next two matches, however, next week are going to be against the Philadelphia Fusion as well as the Paris Eternal. Tall order to go up against. Um, based on what you've seen from both of those teams, do you feel like this is gonna be uh, very tough for you guys? Or like, what's the confidence level right now? <coughs> 어 저희가 이제 어 이번 경기 때는 저희가 좀 저희 모습을 잘잘 보여줬는데 이제 다음 두 경기가 그 필리 필리랑 파리거든요. 그래서 광팀이잖아요. 지금 잘하는 지금 잘하는 팀들이잖아요. 네. 그래서 어 어떻게 좀 어려울 것 같나요? 아니면 어떨 것 같나요? 다음 두 경기들이. 어 일단 뭐 저희가 겁내지만 않으면 대회 때 그래도 저희가 해볼만 할것 같아요. 충분히 이길 수 있다고 생각합니다. So as long as you know we don't get like you know intimidated or scared or anything, and we play our game, then we can definitely win against both teams. Absolutely, I love the confidence, and that is what you need to come out on top. But Birdring, Andrew, thank you both so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. And we're now heading into a very quick break, and afterwards we are back with the second match of the day. It's going to be the Washington Justice facing off against the Toronto Defiant.